This is our series in Mexico. We put everything in storage, packed our bags, and bought a one-way ticket. Our plan is to explore and eat our way through this beautiful and diverse country. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when a new episode drops. I have a bit of a travel day today. Fly into Cancun, renting a car, then driving down to Tulum. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be good. Second leg is done. We are in Cancun. We just have to go get a car and drive to uh, Tulum. We are in our rental car. It's cute. It's like a little. It's like a little. Bingo. It's like a little bingo. Off-road SUV. That's kind of funny how they said SUV is like the smallest SUV in history. It's cool though. After checking in and getting settled, we go for a ride along the Boca Paella. That's the road that runs parallel to the beach. It's lined with hotels, restaurants, boutiques, beach clubs, and of course, yoga studios and juice shops. Hey, so we arrived at the Papaya Playa Project, which is a beach club down here in Tulum. So we took a bike down. Just got through the little bike ride. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go uh, see if we can't score a spot on the beach. Once we get situated in the beach club, we're kind of bummed to find out that there was so much Saragossa on the beach that swimming wouldn't be much fun. However, the water was so beautiful and unique to this area that we didn't mind sipping our cocktails and staring off into paradise. Okay, we were told if there is one meal that you have to have in Tulum, it's at Heartwood. I think after eating there, we totally agree. It was amazing. The freshest fish that we've had since we've been in the area, for sure. Maybe even Mexico? From the outside gates, you can smell the pungent scent of incense, like smoke coming from the copal resin and buckets used to ward away flies and mosquitoes. Disciplined chef, owner, and preservationist Eric Warner has become quite the celebrity in Tulum, and rightly so. When the chef from Noma, which is arguably the best restaurant in the world, says he dreams about your food, you're doing something right. The husband and wife team moved to Tulum in 2010 to escape the rush of the New York restaurant world. This is a romantic notion that flows into every nook of their operation. The open air restaurant requires constant maintenance as the jungle would swallow it whole within a month if constant care and pruning wasn't tended to. The food is cooked on open, primitive fire, and with my back to the heat, I can feel the intensity of the flames and a reminder of what it must be like for these cooks every night in the sweltering heat of the Yucatan. Their chalkboard menu offers their fish that is either spear or line caught in the Caribbean Sea and is brought in daily. It's only enough to cook for service that night so that none goes to waste. Chef Warner supports the local community by sourcing from local farms and fishermen and strictly Mayan ingredients. And now that Tulum has been cycled through Instagram and people are in search of the next hidden gem, Heartwood is the constant, a trend-proof concept that's worth visiting Tulum for, in and by itself. Okay, so today I am going to go do a bit of cave diving today in the cenotes with uh, Diving Cenotes Tulum. His name is Paolo. So I'm headed to meet Paolo right now and we're going to go do a couple dives this morning. It should be a lot of fun. The main draw to the pit cenote is the beautiful light beams that illuminate this deep cavern dive. Also near the bottom of the cavern is an eerie halcyon layer made up of hydrogen sulfide. If you're one of the first divers of the day, you swim through it and experience the feeling of gliding through clouds. It's definitely a surreal occurrence. With an estimated 6,000 different cenotes on the Yucatan Peninsula, the entire underground is basically like Swiss cheese. 
Most people choose to just swim in the crystal clear water, but adventurous scuba divers can actually dive into the caverns and caves of the cenotes. First dive done. It was really cool. Uh, the place we went to is called The Pit. Um, it's just like a, obviously, just a big deep kind of like hole, but it has some stalactites, like mites and the, uh, the light rays coming through it, coming through the water. And it was really cool, yeah. Unlike the pit, which is largely just a big hole in the ground, Dreamgate is a series of horizontal passages decorated with a stunning array of stalactites and stalagmites. Considered by many to be one of the best cenotes for diving in the Yucatan, the Dreamgate cenote is so beautiful, it was used during the filming of the BBC documentary, Planet Earth. If you're a bit on the claustrophobic side, there are a few passages that are pretty narrow. If that's not your cup of tea, there are literally hundreds of other cenotes to choose from. For the Mayans, the cenotes were more than just a freshwater source. They were a place of astrological importance. They also believed them to be the mouths that opened to the underworld of the god of rain. And to the Mayans, the underworld was considered to be the provenance of life, and they did everything within their power to keep balance and keep their gods happy, including sacrifice. Just finished up our second dive. Um, man, it was it was gorgeous. It was it was one of the best, it was one of the coolest caves I've ever, ever been on. Had a great time with Paolo. Self-defined as fire to table cuisine, the dishes at Arca are meant to be shared. The wait staff briefs you on the concept and customs of the restaurant before taking your order. Much like Heartwood, the ingredients are locally sourced and micro seasonal. After Noma's famous pop-up in Tulum in 2017, which sold 7,000 tickets in three hours at $750 a seat. And if you do the math, that's 5.25 million sheets of paper. The 90 visiting chefs got a taste of the Yucatan and one stuck around for good. Arca now has a celebrity chef on their side. As California born Jose Luis Henestroza, who once cooked at Noma, is now a partner and has been putting them on the map for the last couple of years. They pride themselves on being the only restaurant in Tulum with the sous vide technology, which is very 2012 of them. Arca receives half the press that Hartwood gets, but it's for sure worth a visit, and some even think that the food outplays Hartwood. Last leg to Cancun. I think it's gonna go in a car. And then to Tulum. And then to Tulum. Okay. Not the last leg. We're only about halfway there. Probably not even halfway there. We're a third of the way there. Alright. She thinks she's gonna cut this, but she's not. This is gonna make it. I'll see you in the final cut. Yeah. We got bumped out of our. Yeah, see? He said pay attention, maybe, or put your camera up. Something like that. Big smile. And he's back there somewhere. Ah. His bike is the smallest bike ever for somebody my size. This place was made and paid for by Instagram. <laughs> Disneyland for hipsters. 